Hey guys, welcome back. In this lecture, we will continue and conclude our short introduction to operating systems fundamentals. We will talk about the context switches, how the operating system manages thread scheduling, and in the end, we will provide a few rules of thumb on when to use threads and when to use processes. So what is a context switch? As we described in the previous lecture, each instance of an application we run runs independently from other processes. Normally, there are way more processes than cores. Each process may have one or more threads, and all these threads are competing with each other to be executed on the CPU. Even if we have multiple cores, there are still way more threads than cores, so the operating system will have to run one thread, then stop it, run another thread, stop it, and so on. The act of stopping one thread, scheduling it out, scheduling in another thread and starting it is called a context switch. The reason it's important for us to understand context switches is because they are not cheap when we deal with many threads and is the price we need to pay for concurrency. You can think of it as the time it takes us humans to gather our thoughts and regain full focus when we multitask at work or at home. There is always that period of time that we are not fully productive anytime we get interrupted and need to switch to doing something else. The same happens in the operating system. Each thread when running on a CPU occupies some resources like registers, caches in the CPU and kernel resources in the memory. And when we switch to a different thread, we need to store all this data and restore the resources of another thread back to the CPU and memory. The key takeaways we need to know about context switches are that having too many threads can cause something called threshing, which means that the operating system actually spends more time in managing threads, like performing those context switches, instead of doing real productive work, like running our tasks. The second is, threads consume less resources than processes, as we remember threads inside a process share a lot of resources among themselves. So context switches between two threads in the same process are a lot cheaper than context switching between two threads from different processes. Now that we understand context switching, let's talk about how the operating system decides when to run which thread and when to perform a context switch. Imagine we're doing homework using our favorite text editor while listening to our favorite music in the background. So we have two processes, the text editor and the music player. For simplicity, say our music player has two threads, one is loading the music from the file and playing it to the speakers, and the other thread is the UI thread that shows us the progress of the track and responds to mouse clicks on the play and stop buttons. The text editor, which also has two threads, one is again a UI thread showing us what we already typed and also responds to keyboard and mouse events, and the other thread runs every two seconds and saves our current work to a file. So for simplicity, we also have one core and we have four threads we need to decide how to schedule on that one core. So assuming the arrival order of those tasks and their corresponding length of execution is given, how does the operating system decide who runs first? So how about we simply schedule the tasks on the first come first serve basis? That sounds fair, whoever came first should be executed first. So we schedule the file saver thread first, then the music player thread, the text editor UI thread, and the music player UI thread in the end. The obvious problem with this approach is if a very long thread arrives first, it can cause what's called starvation for other threads. This is a particularly big problem for UI threads. This will make our applications unresponsive and our users will have a terrible experience. A common fact that you might have already noticed in the table is that UI threads are usually shorter. Normally, they simply respond to an input from a user and update the screen. So how about we schedule the shorter job first? In this case, our scheduling sequence would look like this. However, this has an opposite problem. There are user-related events coming to our system all the time. So if we keep scheduling the shortest job first all the time, the longer tasks that involve computations will never be executed. 
Okay, so now after we ran those thought experiments and understand what kind of trade-offs and challenges the operating system needs to deal with when fairly allocating the CPU time among threads, let's learn how it really works in most operating systems in general. The operating system divides the time into moderately sized pieces called epochs. In each epoch, the operating system allocates a different time slice for each thread. Notice that not all the threads get to run or complete in each epoch. The decision on how to allocate the time for each thread is based on a dynamic priority the operating system maintains for each thread. The static priority is set by the developer ahead of time, and the bonus is adjusted by the operating system in every epoch for each thread. This way, the operating system will give preference to interactive and real-time threads that need more immediate attention, and in the same time, it will give preference to computational threads that did not complete or did not get enough time to run in previous epochs to prevent starvation. The last question I want to address before we start working on our first multi-threaded application is when to use multiple threads in a single program and when to simply create a new program and run it in a different process. So the mental picture we should have to make the decision is the multi-threaded approach versus this approach, also sometimes referred to as microservices architecture. As we saw in these pictures, threads share a lot of the resources among themselves. So if we want to run multiple tasks that share a lot of data, we would prefer a multi-threaded application architecture. Also, threads are much faster to create and destroy, and switching between multiple threads in the same process is much faster than switching between multiple processes. Lastly, we prefer to create separate programs and running them in separate processes if security and stability is of higher priority for us, as separate processes are completely isolated from each other, whereas one thread in a multi-threaded application can bring down the entire app. Also, if simply the tasks are unrelated to each other in any way, then it makes no sense to put them together in the same process. In this lecture, we'll learn about context switches, what they are and their impact on our performance, how thread scheduling generally works in operating systems, with the caveat that each OS implements its own scheduling algorithms. And we also addressed when to prefer multi-threaded application architecture and when we should take the multi-processes architecture approach. See you guys in the next lecture.